Hello, in this video, we will talk about innate immunity. It's a type of immunity. So first of all, we should know what is mean by immunity. So immunity is the ability of a body to fight against the pathogen, to fight against a pathogen. This is nothing but disease causing agent or any infectious agent or pathogen is nothing but uh, disease causing agent. Pathos means disease. Pathos means harmless, harmful, genic means producing. So harmless producing, pathogenic, harmless producing, harm, genic producing. So the pathogen is nothing but the agent which causes disease or any harm. And the immunity is the ability of a body to fight against this pathogen. That is called immunity. And this immunity is classified into two types. Number one, innate immunity. And number two, acquired immunity. In this class, we are going to study about innate immunity. Innate, the name itself, we can understand innate. In means within the. Nat means, it refers to natal means but. By birth. So that innate immunity is called inborn immunity. Inborn immunity. That means by birth, we all get this immunity by birth itself. That is called innate immunity. In means within the natural refers to birth. So by birth, we all get this immunity. So that's why this is called innate immunity. And this innate immunity is also known as non-specific immunity. Non-specific immunity. Why? Because this immunity is not against any particular pathogen. This is remains going to be same for all the pathogens. This will be same for all the kind of infectious agents. So that's why this is non-specific. It does not change its behavior according to pathogen. For all the pathogens, it remains same. And this innate immunity, we also call barriers. Barriers. This innate immunity we also call barriers. Now, these barriers are classified into four types, and those four types of barriers we are going to study now. The first type physical barriers, second type. Physiological barriers, physiological barriers, and third type, cellular barriers, and fourth type, cytokine barriers. Totally four types. Once again, I'm pronouncing physical barriers, physiological barriers, cellular barriers, cytokine barriers. Coming to physical barriers. This physical barriers includes like some layers or membranes. Some layers or membranes will be included under physical barriers. Uh, for example, our entire body is covered by, our entire body is covered by a membrane that is called skin. So it would be the first example that comes and inside our body we have internal linings also they are nothing but mucous membranes mucous membranes 
and you can find this mucous membranes in our digestive tract as well as respiratory tract and also in the reproductive tracts digestive respiratory and reproductive tracts in all these uh, the systems you can find this mucous membranes if at all the pathogen cross the skin and enters the body through any way either through the digestive route or respiratory route if any pathogen enters the body this mucous membranes will provide resistance against that pathogen so that's why very very important and coming to skin as well as the first line of defense we call it coming to physi physiological barriers this physiological barriers includes some secretions secretions all of you don't get confused with the physical and physiological physical means layers or membranes physiological that means related to organ systems functioning related to functioning of organ system like some secretions for example hcl which is an acid that is produced in the stomach and second example saliva which is secreted in our salivary glands in our mouth next tears from our eyes tears from our eyes coming to hcl hcl means hydrochloric acid it is secreted in the stomach Uh, the main function of this hcl is to activate the inactive inactive pepsinogen to active pepsin horn pepsin enzyme and that pepsin enzyme will act on the protein but apart from that apart from activating the pepsinogen into pepsin this hcl also kills different microbes that enters the digestive system coming to saliva the saliva is secreted by three types of salivary glands we know parotid gland submaxillary and sublingual glands these glands secretes saliva the saliva also antimicrobial in function and as well as tears the tears consisting of salt salt is a natural antimicrobial in nature coming to cellular barriers cellular means cells are included which cells are included wbc white blood cells white blood cells suppose a pathogen has crossed the physical barriers also mucous also mucous membranes or anything if enters blood suppose uh, we have some cut on the skin blood may come so right when pathogen directly enters the blood there certain cells are present in the blood which act against the microbes so which includes wbc and we uh, we can call them as polymorphonuclear leukocytes polymorphonuclear leukocytes pmnl we call it pmnl pmnl also neutrophils neutrophils and macrophages the macrophages are present in the various parts of our body like then then form will be different suppose kaffer cells kaffer cells in the liver kaffer cells in the liver and also dust cells dust cells in the lungs dust cells in the lungs they are active against they are active or resistant against to different microbial actions kaffer cells of the liver dust cells of the lungs comes under macrophages okay coming to the last type of barriers that is cytokines 
cytokine barriers. Here, suppose if any virus is going to attack some of our body cells, some of our body cells in our systems, some body cells are affected with virus, and these cells produce, the cells produce interferons. The cells produce interferons, and those cells are called cytokines. And they produce interferons, and these interferons are effective against uh, the virus or infection to the other cells. So cytokines are nothing but viral infected cells, viral infected cells, which produce interferons, which produce interferons, and. Resistant against other infections provides resistance. Provides resistance against other infections. Other cells, even other cells, it is going. They are going to produce. So these interferons also found to be very effective in the treatment of the COVID nineteen. So nowadays. Uh, we are facing a lot of uh, uh, crisis because of this COVID. In the treatment of COVID-19, also these interferons are uh, found to be effective. Why? Because they are viral infected cells producing those interferons, and they are protecting other cells uh, against the virus. So, hope you understood the topic of innate immunity. Thank you very much.